Smoking weed in the street without cops harassing. Imagine going to court with no trial. Lifestyle crews of blue Bahama waters. No welfare supporters. More conscious of the way we raise our daughters. Days are shorter, nights are colder. Feeling like life is over. These snakes strike like a cobra. The world's hot, my son got knocked. Evidently, it's elementary. They want us all gone eventually. Trooping out of state for a plate. Knowledge, if coke was cooked without the garbage, we'd all have the top dollars. Imagine everybody flashing, fashion, designer clothes, lacing your click up with diamond rolls. Your people holding dough, no parole, no rubbers. Going raw, imagine law with no undercovers. Just some thoughts for the mind. I take a glimpse into time, watch the blimp read, the world is mine. If I rule the world, imagine that. The way to be paradise life relaxing, black, Latino, and Anglo Saxon. Amani exchange the range, cast, Lord Travis your bath, free at last, brand new whips to crash. Then we laugh in the illa path. The villa houses for the crew, how we do. Trees for breakfast, dime sexes have been stretches. So many years of depression make me vision the better living type of place to raise kids in. Opening eyes to the lies, history's told foul, but I'm as wise as the old owl. Plus the gold child, seeing things like I was controlling, click rolling. Tricking six digits on kicks and still holding trips to Paris. I civilize every savage. Give me one shot, I turn trite life to lavish. Political prisoner, set free, stress free. No work release, purple and threes and jet skis. Feel the wind breeze in West Indies. I think Coretta Scott King, mayor the cities in reverse themes. The Willies, it sound foul, but every girl I meet to go downtown. I'd open every cell in Attica, send them to Africa. If I Africa. The world, imagine that. I Story how the thugs live and worry. Duck down in car seats, heat's mandatory. Running from Jake, getting chased, hunger for papes. These are the breaks, many mistakes go down out of state. Wait, I had to let it marinate. We carry weight, trying to get laced. Flip the A stack to save. Millionaire plan to keep the gap with the cock hammer. Making moves in Atlanta, back and forth scrambler. Cause you can have all the chips. Be poor or rich, still nobody want a nigga have a shit. If I rule the world and everything in it, sky's the limit. I push the Q45 infinite. It wouldn't be no such thing as jealousies or be felony. Strictly living longevity to the destiny I thought I'd never see, but reality struck. Better find out before your time's out. What the fuck? If I rule the world, imagine that. Yeah.
Hey there. Everyone take your seats. We are going to start our first video. Stop your conversation. No one's interested. Take your seats. Here we go. सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा और तुम्हारी लाठियों और गोलियों से जो कत्ल हुए हैं मेरे यार सब तुम्हारी लाठियों और गोलियों से जो कत्ल हुए हैं मेरे यार सब उनकी याद में दिलों को बर्बाद रखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा और तुम स्याहियों से झूठ लिखोगे हमें मालूम है तुम स्याहियों से झूठ लिखोगे हमें मालूम है हो हमारे खून से ही हो सही सच जरूर लिखा जाएगा हो हमारे खून से ही हो सही सच जरूर लिखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा और मोबाइल टेलीफोन इंटरनेट भरी दोपहर में बंद करके मोबाइल टेलीफोन इंटरनेट भरी दोपहर में बंद करके सर्द अंधेरी रात में पूरे शहर को नजर बंद करके हथौड़ियाँ लेकर दफ फतन मेरे घर में घुस आना हथौड़ियाँ लेकर दफ फतन मेरे घर में घुस आना मेरा सर बदन मेरी मुख्तसर सी जिंदगी को तोड़ जाना मेरे लखते जिगर जिगर का टुकड़ा मेरे लखते जिगर को बीच चौराहे पे मार कर मेरे लखते जिगर को बीच चौराहे पे मार कर जो बेअंदाज झुंड में खड़े होकर तुम्हारा मुस्कुराना सब याद रखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा और दिन में मीठी मीठी बातें करना सामने से दिन में मीठी मीठी बातें करना सामने से सब कुछ ठीक है हर जबान में तुतलाना 
सब कुछ ठीक है हर जबान में तुत लाना रात होते ही हक मांग रहे लोगों पे लाठियां चलाना गोलियां चलाना हम ही पे हमला करके हम ही को हमलावर बताना सब याद रखना ये भी याद रखा जाएगा किस किस तरह से तुमने वतन को तोड़ने की साजिशें की ये भी याद रखा जाएगा किस किस जतन से हमने वतन को जोड़ने की ख्वाहिशें की ये भी याद रखा जाएगा ये भी याद रखा जाएगा और जब कभी भी जिक्र आएगा जहां में दौरे बुजदिली का तुम्हारा काम याद रखा जाएगा तुम्हारा काम याद रखा जाएगा और जब कभी भी जिक्र आएगा जहां में तौर जिंदगी का हमारा नाम याद रखा जाएगा हमारा नाम याद रखा जाएगा कि कुछ लोग थे कुछ लोग थे जिनके इरादे टूटे नहीं थे लोहे की हथौड़ियों से कि कुछ लोग थे जिनके इरादे टूटे नहीं थे लोहे की हथौड़ियों से कि कुछ लोग थे जिनके जमीर बिके नहीं थे इजारेदारों के कौड़ियों से जैसे तुम्हारे विज्ञान कि कुछ लोग थे जो डटे रहे थे तूफान नू के गुजर जाने के बाद तक के कुछ लोग थे जो डटे रहे थे तूफान नू के गुजर जाने के बाद तक के कुछ लोग थे जो जिंदा रहे थे अपनी मौत की खबर आने के बाद तक के कुछ लोग थे जो जिंदा रहे थे अपनी मौत की खबर आने के बाद तक और भले भूल जाए भले भूल जाए भले भूल जाए पलक आंखों को मूंदना भले भूल जाए पलक आंखों को मूंदना भले भूल जाए जमीन अपनी दूरी पे घूमना हमारे कटे परों की परवाज को हमारे फटे गलों की आवाज को याद रखा जाए तुम रात लिखो हम चांद लिखेंगे तुम जेल में डालो हम दीवार फांद लिखेंगे और तुम एफ लिखो हम तैयार लिखेंगे और तुम हमें कत्ल कर दो यूं करो यूं करो तुम हमें कत्ल कर दो हम बन के भूत लिखेंगे तुम्हारे कत्ल के सारे सबूत लिखेंगे हम बन के भूत लिखेंगे तुम्हारे कत्ल के सारे सबूत लिखेंगे और तुम अदालतों से बैठकर चुटकुले लिखो हम सड़कों दीवारों पे इंसाफ लिखेंगे बहरे भी सुन ले इतनी जोर से बोलेंगे अंधे भी पढ़ ले इतना साफ लिखेंगे और तुम काला कमल लिखो हम लाल गुलाब लिखेंगे तो तुम तो तुम जमीन पे जुल्म लिख दो आसमान पे इनकलाब लिखा जाएगा सब याद रखा जाएगा सब कुछ याद रखा जाएगा Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for having me here. My name is Amir Aziz. I'm a poet from India. Democracy as an idea itself is in gravest danger in my country, and I really hope that our fight for democracy lasts long enough. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for being here. Put your Please put your hands to no. Please put your hands together for the resistance revival chorus. This morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. I woke up this 
morning with my mind stand on freedom hallelujah 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 oh well i'm walking and talking with my mind Talking with my, you know that it's stayed on freedom. I said I'm walking and talking with my, but you know that it's stayed on freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can clap along, you can sing along because it ain't no harm with your mind. Come on, say. You know that it's sin. Don't worry about being polite. Just sing it. Ain't no heart with your mind. Let me hear you say. All right. How great was that, everybody? Hello, hello. Hello there. How are we doing tonight? <laughs> so good to see you all. My right? name is Sheetal Sheth. I am Seth. Okay, <laughs> she gets the applause. I get it. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> well, I, I am the brown one on stage. You are. You are. I noticed. <laughs> I am Seth Herzog. Thank you. One friend. One friend. <laughs> Thank you, Manish. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for coming tonight. We have a very special evening. They said, Seth, will you come down and host with uh, Shields? And I said, I'll do it under a few conditions. I want a sea of microphones on stage. <laughs> I want a giant window, but you can't see anything out of it except <laughs> barrels. So thank you very much. <laughs> and I want an empty balcony. No one in the balcony, completely empty, or else I don't show up. So thank you for doing every condition. Oh, and I want one empty table on the side, completely empty. <laughs> Thank you, Seth, for being here. I thank you. No problem. Excited. Welcome, everyone. Everyone knows why we're here, right? <laughs> to celebrate International Yoga Day. Yes, International Yoga Day. <laughs> did, you, I, did you see our PM? I feel like, though, as the white person, I should be the one to talk about yoga. Oh. <laughs> yoga is, for me, is about healing and wellness and mostly for a middle-aged white woman to get over divorce. Did you see our PM? Because what are we calling him? We're not saying his name tonight, guys. We know why we're here. 
and we're not saying his name because he's (laughs) gonna he's he should not be named he's gonna put us in a bad moody if you know what i'm saying well did you see him today at the un he is the reason why we have yoga in the west he invented yoga he claims to have invented yoga and brought it here i looked at his bio he invented America. He discovered America. <laughs> That's in the bio. He also created chess. Yep, and the number four. That's in the bio. Seriously, though, we would like to officially in, in, invite you to participate in Howdy Democracy, which is why we are here tonight, yep. which is a night of art, music, conversation, and truth. Now, why do we call it Howdy Democracy? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Seth. It's not like we planned it. (laughs) So, a few years ago, our PM had a big rally in Texas. Right. And they called it Howdy Modi. Ah, it almost rhymes. We said his name, though. Oh, my God, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. (laughs) I'm not listening. Frankly, first of all, are there any Gujaratis in the house? Yeah. Thank you. I have some fellow Gujaratis. Like Jason Momoa in Game of Thrones. (laughs) More people got that than I thought. So as a fellow Gujarati, you guys know that we shouldn't be here, right? Like it's actually blasphemous. If you would read the DMs on my social media, you would see I am a disgrace to the Gujaratis. Should I not have written that? (laughs) I thought it was appropriate. But speaking of identity. Yes. Yes. Speaking of identity, and I know that everyone identifies in a different way. I'm seeing a lot of Indians, a lot of South Asians in the room. We are wondering, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> who, who here thinks they're the most Indian person in the room? There's got to be a couple of you who think they're the most. They really hit it hard. Go ahead. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. I know there's somebody who thinks that you're okay. One there. We got one. <laughs> Anyone else? You over there? Right. Any dudes? <laughs> right there? Okay. Come on up. You, my friend, with the shirt, and you. And the, and yeah, yes, come yes, on yes, up. Come up. It'll be fun. It'll be quick. Come and on there's up. a prize. Be quick. There's a prize. Yeah, you get a prize. Oh, the stairs over here. Stairs over here. Find the stairs. Like the engineer you are. Find the stairs. This is like the Oscars where they have to walk really far. Yeah, exactly, the right? They're sat in the back. Come, come, come on over center. Come. So we're going we're gonna to ask them a series of questions, and we're going to find out which two of them is more Indian than the other. And then they win a bottle of wine. Come. Yeah. Hi. I don't know if that's on. Join I'm going to give you mine because I don't. I don't well, hello. Uh, yeah, I it might be on. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So first of all, we're going to find out their names. Your name? Oh hi. Oh. Terabop. Terabop? That's right. <laughs> well, he gets an early lead by being the only male. That did not go over. You, you said it would kill. <laughs> <laughs> I said that we should give the boy an extra point because, you know, Indians love boys. But I don't think people got that. <laughs> polite. Four polite laughs. What's your last name? Um, how, do, how do I explain to him what I just said? You, know, ter- you said Terabop. Is that the whole name? It means, it means your dad in Hindi. It means your dad. Ah. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. <laughs> do you have an actual name? Um, Prane. Probably what? Shastri. All right. Okay. So far, that's very good. He's so far in the lead. You are? <laughs> Vipula. Vipula what? Devani. Very good. And you? Arshia Kapadia. I'm Gujarati and Muslim. Oh. <laughs> Dangerous. Dangerous combination. <laughs> I feel like so far they both are pretty tied. with. The yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's kind of uh, in the same boat. Um, what do you what do you do now? Like in your job in life, I'm a musician. Point against. <laughs> Point against. Have you told your parents that? Um, they approve. Weirdly enough. Ah, again. Right, exactly. Not working. <laughs> and you? I'm a relationship coach. Interesting. <laughs> Is that kind of like a matchmaker? No. Point against. Point against. <laughs> Way. It's the other, the other way. way. You're encouraging divorce. <laughs> I'm encouraging better relationships. Encouraging better relationships. Point against. And <laughs> former journalist who sold her soul to corporate America. Oh. Oh, point four. I think. What? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Where do you work now? Um, I'm just. You don't want to say? <laughs> scared. Extra point. <laughs> Extra point for being scared. Not saying. Not saying the company she works for as if they're here. <laughs> All right, next question. Yeah. When is the last time a parent hugged you? Um, <laughs> what was the date and time? <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Bombay in uh, this year, earlier this year in February. This year when you were in Bom Bombay, okay. Yeah. Do you remember the last time one of your parents hugged you? Uh, they're in town, so recently. Recently. <laughs> Again, you're all failing this question. <laughs> About four months ago. Four months ago, that's a solid answer. <laughs> Do you remember the time and day? <laughs> I do, because I came into the US four months ago, so it was a goodbye hug. Oh, that's the one, once a year is good, you know. Um, what else do you want to ask? Are you married? Are you married, yes. No. No. Recently divorced after 35 years of an Indian marriage. <laughs> we're, we're, we're clapping for divorce. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore, also oh, no. divorced. <laughs> Three single people. This is this is a hot trio. <laughs> Three single people. We can do some matchmaking while we're here. Yeah, yeah. The matchmakers are like already doing the math. <laughs> All right. Um, what else do we have? And were you allowed to go to camp? <laughs> I have to think about that. I never went to camp, so probably not. Yeah. Point point for you. I wasn't allowed to step out of the house. Yes. Good answer. There you go. 10 p.m. curfew. Never done a sleepover. Never done a sleepover. Never had a sleepover. We, so you we were not to go anywhere in the summer. No camp, nothing. I like it. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's what do your parents tough. think you do for a job? <laughs> they think I run a business. Yes. Solid answer. <laughs> I didn't get the question. What do your parents think you do? Oh, they think that I work for Facebook because I work in social media and they don't get it. <laughs> so they're like, what do you do on Facebook all day? So... <laughs> That's another amazing answer. <laughs> All right, should we, should, we, should we vote? Yeah. Let's have the audience. You guys are going to vote. Who here do you think of these three is the most Indian? Is it our friend Dip Pop? She, hold on, hold on, Seth, one second. What? She's trying to get a little extra credit. Oh, she oh extra, 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 extra credit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> she turned her shower curtain into a jacket. <laughs> and if either of you would like to say a final word before they vote, you're welcome to. Uh, my name is uh, Pranav, <laughs> and uh, I came from Pune City, India. And I wanted to say, please, everybody, if you vote for me, I would have a lot of thank you for you. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> well, I'm Gujarati, and I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Fear works in your favor. Independent, American, Indian, Gujarati, Muslim, woman. I like it. Wow. All right, let's vote. Have your, pick your favorite. Who loved my f tall friend? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like six people. <laughs> Who liked our relationship friend? Thank you. Who liked our friend with the special coat? Wow. It's real close, guys. No, she wins. Very good. Excellent Yay. work. The most Indian woman in the room. Do we have a bottle of wine for her? Yes, we do. We will I don't get know it where it is. We'll get it for you. We're going to get you a bottle, a bottle of uh, wine we'll for you, a special you. bottle of wine. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for participating. Thank We're going to move you, on with the show. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a good sport. <laughs> the, the CD Winery people wanted me to say that tonight we are proud to introduce Howdy Democracy Cabernet Sauvignon made right here in New York City. Ten dollars of each bottle will be donated, so be sure to check out them on display at the bar. You can purchase the bottles through the server, the bartender, the concierge, whatever you want. <laughs> keep drinking, keep eating. I would like to introduce our next act, Mr. Salil Tripathi. There we go. I'm also a Gujarati. And I'm writing a book about Gujaratis. But uh, here I am to talk about a friend of mine who is also a Gujarati. And she spent 70 days in jail last year. And many of you know her name. And if you don't, I would urge you to read up about her. 
I'm going to talk about Tista Sitalwad. In an ideal world, she would have been here with us. And she and I went to college together, so it's personal when I say this, that uh, she's a very, very brave woman and pride of Gujarat, pride of India, pride of the world. She's a former journalist who formed an anti-communalism platform after the riots which rocked her hometown and mine, called Bombay, in the early 1990s. She has written extensively on law, human rights, and justice, and championed the cause of the victims of the Gujarat pogrom in 2002. She has pursued those cases with a single-minded determination and recently wrote a memoir about her activism and all that she has done for the constitution and the rule of law in India. She was jailed for 70 days, but granted bail. She faces travel restrictions. And I'm going to write, read out a short passage that she wrote recently. The prison, it is famously said, holds a mirror to society. The conditions within prisons, to stretch this analogy further, reflect the quality of any democracy. By that yardstick, India needs a hard and harsh soul search. Not only has our collapsing criminal justice system ensured a mockery of reasonably speedy trials, but tardy and often skewed, if not biased, investigations and prosecutions have ensured that under trials languish unforgotten, unforgotten in our jails for decades. During my recent nine week long incarceration in the Sabarmati Mahila jail, a source of joy and succor were the thousands of postcards that friends and compatriots sent me. Some of these had direct political messages that ended with this one line. We also demand the immediate recognition of all political and social prisoners and the release from all over the country. This is a calibrated demand. While the unjustness of long, unaccounted for jail terms amounts to a denial of basic freedoms for each and all the under trials so jailed, the case of the prisoner and under trial clearly held for her work and views needs a different treatment. First, however, the argument for all those behind bars. The figures are there for all to see. Overcrowded jails, poor hygiene conditions, and little or no statutory monitoring of the state of affairs or conditions within. Democratic societies constantly evolve as does the shape, structure, and allegiance of the state. Through this evolution, which includes shifts in public attitudes and definition of crimes, value systems also emerge. These sometimes harden and at other times expand. Nelson Mandela's treatise, I am prepared to die at the opening of the defense case in the Rivonia trial in 1964, hold a lesson for India and the world today. It explains how only the Af after the African National Congress was declared an unlawful organization were members and the leadership compelled to go underground as the apartheid state passed harsher and harsher laws and used the force of armed forces to intimidate whole populations. The axiom, yesterday's freedom fighter is today's terrorist, emerged before, resounded then, and is so true today. I'm now going to take us briefly back to 2002, the year when the riots took place, the communal riots, the pogrom took place in Gujarat. It happened on the 27th of February. We all know that a train compartment burnt in Godhra and in retaliatory violence, officially 900 people were murdered and massacred. Out of them, about two thirds were Muslims. There were rapes, there were lynchings, there were looting of property, there was destruction of many things, and they went on for 70 days at the very least. As a result of that, Joe Biden's honored guest tomorrow was, uh, I'm told we are not to name him, right? So I'll leave it at that, yeah. Joe Biden's honored guest tomorrow was prevented from visiting the US, Europe, for a good period of eight to 12 years. He's now free to be here and do the yoga, which he did this morning. But when all this happened, there was a witness who saw this happen. And the witness who saw this happen was a brave man called Sanjeev Bhatt, who was a very senior police officer. He knew what was going on, and he responded to his conscience, his code, and the Constitution of India, and he blew the whistle. And for those sins, he's today in jail. 
Two days ago, we had Father's Day. And his daughter has not seen him for several years now. It is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce his daughter, also Gujarati, Akashi Bhatt, who will be speaking shortly. <laughs> Akashi is a doctor. She's doing her DPhil at Oxford. She studied in India. She come again from a very learned family. Her grandfather, I learned recently, was one of the editors of a magazine called Raymut, which was a bit like Paris Review, Partisan Review, trying to break new ground. And Akashi is doing the same, keeping her father in front of our eyes, and so that we continue to remember. Akashi. Good evening, all. Thank you so much for coming here today, and thank you so much, Salilji, for the introduction. My name is Akashi Bhatt, and I always very proudly introduce myself as the daughter of Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt. He, my father, Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt, is a former Indian police service officer, a whistleblower, but most importantly, he's the sole surviving witness to Modi's complicit role in orchestrating the Gujarat program of 2002. For the last 21 years, my father has relentlessly been fighting for justice for the thousands who were victimized by this regime. 21 years is a very long time for justice to be systematically delayed and denied to the thousands who were brutally massacred, whose families were destroyed, all for the political ambition of one man, who was then the chief minister of Gujarat, who is now the prime minister of India. In the last over two decades, my father, our family, has faced numerous threats, intimidations of various sorts from this regime to ensure that his testimony did not see the light of court, that his evidences were not submitted in court. But despite all the resistance from the regime, my father came forward and submitted incriminating evidence directly implicating Narendra Modi, not just for orchestrating the Gujarat program, but also his role in assassinating Harin Pandya, a minister in his own cabinet in 2002, who had secretly started deposing regarding Modi's role in the Gujarat riots, as well as various extrajudicial killings that were done at the behest of Narendra Modi and Amit Shah. In 2018, so ever since Narendra Modi came to power in 2014, one of the first things that happened was my father was dismissed from duty under the frivolous grounds of being absent because for the days when he was deposing before various forums against Narendra Modi. But things took a much more dangerous turn after 2014 because constitutionally independent bodies in the country, like the judiciary, became completely subverted to the Modi regime. They were the first to fall. Since 2014, the judiciary is being used for two purposes. One, to exonerate Modi and anyone associated with the Gujarat program from all of the heinous crimes committed by them. And the second, to systematically target and incarcerate any voice of dissent, anyone who could potentially tie Modi to the Gujarat program. In 2018, in order to silence that one man who can hold Modi accountable, that one man who can directly tie Modi to the Gujarat program. On 5th of September 2018, in the early hours of the morning, my father was taken away from our home under the pretext of questioning him in a 30-year-old case, a case which was a grieved party versus state of Gujarat, which was maliciously overnight converted into state of Gujarat versus Sanjeev Bhatt and a blatantly vitiated trial was conducted where we were not allowed to be present in court. We were not allowed to call in a single defense witness. We were not allowed to cross-examine a single prosecution witness. In the light of absolute no evidence, my father was convicted for a crime he did not commit, his only crime, that he continued to fight for the victims, that he continued to try to hold Modi accountable for the crimes committed by him in 2002. 21 years down the line, my father still continues to fight for the victims. It's been 
five years, yesterday, four years ago yesterday, the judgment convicting him for life imprisonment was given. Four years since the conviction, five years since he's been languishing in jail. Five years is a very long time for an innocent man to be in jail only because he showed exemplary courage to continue to fight. A society which cannot protect its defenders does not deserve them. That my father is an example, his case is emblematic of many My father's case is emblematic of many other such brave individuals who've put their lives on the line to protect the civic society, to protect the democratic values of the nation. All of these years, while systematically these brave individuals were picked up and thrown in jail, when dangerous examples were made out of these men and women, the civic society remained silent and watched in absolute paralyzed fear. This regime thrives on fear. They thrive knowing that no one will raise their voice. We've seen what has happened in the last few years. In the last few weeks itself, 70 convicts who were sentenced for life for their role in the Gujarat rioting were acquitted. And the man who is trying to bring justice for the victims languishes in jail. This is Modi's new India where a fair day in court is not afforded to the honest and the upright. Five years, we have been fighting. We have been running from pillar to post to get one fair day in court. But I think it is now time that everyone raise their voices to let these defenders know that they are not alone, that their fight has not been forgotten, and that their sacrifices will not go in vain. We today stand at a very dangerous crossroads as a nation, either we will be able to preserve the democratic values or we will turn into a totally autocratic nation. What we do today, our decision to remain silent or to raise our voices to protect the defenders will decide the fate of the nation. So as a concerned citizen, as a daughter, I appeal, rather I demand that we stop being silent we stop being fearful of this regime and we raise our voices collectively to ensure that justice is delivered because only then will democracy subsist and only then justice, not vengeance, not retribution, will be brought to our families and the families of thousands who have been victimized by this regime. Thank you. My name is Rupi Kaur. I'm an author, performer, and poet, and I want to welcome everybody to Howdy Democracy. Thank you, everybody, for being here, and thank you to everybody who continues to work hard to amplify underrepresented voices. It is so important that we gather at moments like this to let the world know that we will not stay quiet as long as injustice is happening anywhere. And I wish I could be there with you today because I have some poems I want to read you, but uh, I couldn't be there because I was committed to be elsewhere. So I'm saying hello from Sweden. I'm going to be reading about three pieces. Um, and this first one is from my second book, The Sun and Her Flowers. I am the first woman in my lineage with freedom of choice to craft her future whichever way I choose, to say what's on my mind when I want to. Without the whip of the lash, there are hundreds of firsts that I'm so thankful for, that my mother and her mother and her mother before her did not have the privilege of feeling. What an honor to be the first woman in the family who gets to taste 
her desires. It's no wonder I'm starving to fill up on this life. I have generations of bellies to eat for. The grandmothers must be howling with laughter, huddled around a mud stove in the afterlife, sipping on steaming glasses of milky masala cha. How wild it must be for them to see one of their own living so boldly. This next one is called Immigrant. They have no idea what it's like to lose home at the risk of never finding home again. To have your entire life split between two lands to become the bridge between two countries. And this last one is called Never Forget 1984. I have a very complicated relationship with the country I was born in. Our men were slaughtered in those streets and our women were raped while thousands were tortured and disappeared by police the indian state denies what they did but no amount of yoga or bollywood is going to make us forget the sick genocide they orchestrated thank you it's welcome our next musicians, Ria Modak and Apurva Mudgal. Zulm per zulm hai, Sahir Ludhiani. Pehle socha ke khud ke experience se kuch likhti hoon. Phir socha Sahir Ludhiani se behtar mein kya kahungi jo mujhe kehna hai. To kehte hain Sahir Ludhiani. Zulm per zulm hai. बढ़ता है तो मिट जाता है जुल्म फिर जुल्म है बढ़ता है तो मिट जाता है खून फिर खून है टपकेगा तो जम जाएगा तुमने जिस खून को मक्तल में दबाना चाहा तुमने जिस खून को मक्तल में दबाना चाहा आज वो कूचाओ बाजार में आ निकला है कहीं शोला कहीं नारा कहीं पत्थर बनकर खून चलता है तो रुकता नहीं संगीनों से सर उठाता है तो दबता नहीं आइनों से जुल्म की बात ही क्या जुल्म की औकात ही क्या जुल्म की बात ही क्या जुल्म की औकात ही क्या जुल्म बस जुल्म है आगाज से अंजाम तलक खून फिर खून है सौ शक्ल बदल सकता है ऐसी शक्लें के मिटाओ तो मिटाए न बने ऐसे शोले के बुझाओ तो बुझाए न बने ऐसे नारे के दबाओ तो दबाए न बने और फिर कहते हैं जिगर मुरादाबादी Ah 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 
does not have the power to erase us it is from us that the world exists we do not exist from them of tyranny on my tongue i'm simply grateful that it woke me up Look 
से कदम How great were they, everybody? Come on, let them know. What a fun program so far. Everyone's been so hilarious. I thought it was a comedy show. Anyway, this has been great. I hope everyone's eating and drinking and drinking the special wine, the Hello Democracy wine. Try and get a bottle if you can. There's only 30 left. We wanted to make sure if anyone else needed to make a statement about their Indianness, this is another opportunity to do so. Yeah. If anyone's feeling super Indian and wants to say something, now's the time to do it. <laughs> okay. Appropriate response. Very Indian of you not to say anything. <laughs> Our, I would like to now introduce Suchitra Vijayan from the Polis Project. Yeah, the Polis Project. Hello everyone, I am Suchitra Vijayan. I am the founder and executive director of the Polis Project. We are one of the organizations who are a beneficiary today. Polis Project is a New York-based research and journalism organization and we document communities in resistance. Our work sheds light on state violence and authoritarianism. At Polis Project, we have documented the ongoing persecution and criminalization of dissent in India since 2018. Could we have the video of the names, please? That's very anticlimactic. <laughs> I know you're laughing, but once the names scroll, it's all gonna be doom and gloom. All right, I think the name is gonna scroll in a bit, but I'm gonna start. What you will see in a few seconds behind me is a list of 250 political prisoners targeted by the Indian state under Prime Minister Modi's leadership. This is an incomplete and ongoing list. For every name that is recorded, remembered, hundreds remain forgotten. This list includes some of India's most respected scholars, writers, thinkers, artists, lawyers, whistleblowers, student leaders predominantly from Dalit, Bahujan, and Muslim communities. They have been incarcerated under India's draconian terror and sedition laws with manufactured evidence and fabricated charges. Today, the Indian state can unilaterally designate an individual as a terrorist without proof or due process and incarcerate them for years without trial. Bail is almost impossible. I'm gonna tell you about the first name on this list. Professor Jiyan Sai Baba is an Indian scholar, writer, and human rights activist. Paralyzed from waist down since the age of five due to polio, he was charged with waging war against the Indian state. Waging war against the Indian state. What was the evidence against him? During the trial, the Indian state produced no real evidence. Instead, the courts concluded that merely possessing books pamphlets, video recordings, and a couple of BBC documentary was enough to convict, convict Professor Sai Baba. A bookshelf is now evidence of sedition. I want you to take a moment and sit with it. Your bookshelf is now evidence of waging war against the mighty Indian state. The Indian Supreme Court Justice, M.R. Shah, 
again, the Supreme Court Justice of the world's largest democracy said that no evidence was required and declared that a, wheel bound, a wheelchair bound English professor a terrorist. He also added the brain is more dangerous. The stories of grotesque brutality don't end here. Three of India's political prisoners have died in prison. First, Father Stan Swami, an 84-year-old Jesuit priest, was the oldest person to be arrested under terror charges. Next, 38-year-old rights activist Kanchan Nanaware died while awaiting trial for six years under the terror laws. Finally, 33-year-old Pandu Narote died after being deliberately denied medical treatment after contracting swine flu. Student leader Sharji Imam has spent 1,300 days in prison. Omar Khalid, over 1,000 days. And journalist Siddiq Kapan was incarcerated for 850 days for the crime of committing journalism. He was arrested on his way to report on the gruesome rape and murder of a 19-year-old Dalit girl in Hathras. This list, the list is still not here, so just a reminder to include the list. This list doesn't include the names of political prisoners and journalists in Indian-administered Kashmir. Kuram Parvez, Fahad Shah, Irfan Mehraj, Sajad Gul, and Asif Sultan, the list is long. You heard the brilliant and brave Akashi Bhatt talk about her father. Her father's name appears in this list. Akashi also talked about courage, but no nation should demand such courage from its people. In the age where lies and disinformation wage a war for our attention, the work that organizations like Polis Project do is to keep a record of this time. These records of repression are a powerful reminder that the struggle for freedom and dignity is universal. This work is only possible because of the hundreds and thousands of researchers, journalists, and activists on the ground. Now more than ever, listening to them and supporting their work becomes imperative. Tonight, I'm going to end in solidarity with everyone fighting for freedom and dignity. In Kilab, Zindabad. There we go. How great was that? Informative. Polis is one of the uh, places that your money goes to tonight that we're donating to. Um, yeah. You can read all those names. Maybe you know some of them. Maybe you don't. Danish. Great, great, great guy. Uh, next up, ladies and gentlemen, the host of the long-running show, Democracy Now! Please give it up for Amy Goodman! It's a great honor to be with all of you. I don't know how many of you tune in to Democracy Now! on radio or television, but it's a daily, grassroots, unembedded, independent, international investigative news hour. It's our job to go to where the silence is, which is why I'm here tonight. Interestingly, it's often not so silent. It's just that the sound, the organizing, the poetry doesn't hit the corporate media radar screen. I'm here to read the words of Gaudi Lankesh. She was an outspoken activist and writer who consistently spoke out for human rights and democracy and criticized majoritarian religious fundamentalism and political corruption. She championed student activists like Umar Khalid and Kanaya Kumar and spoke up for secularism. She was shot at her doorstep in 2017 by unidentified men. A man arrested a few years later for her murder said he was told to kill the victim to defend his religion, and he had no idea who she was. These are Gaudi Lankesh's words. 
The rousing speech made by Kanaya Kumar on the premises of JNU on February 9th had me rooting for him because every word that he uttered reminded me of what our country ought to be. This morning, when I saw Umar Khalid speaking his mind at the same campus, I was reminded of Tagore's poem, Where the Mind is Without Fear. That poem speaks of India becoming a country where the mind is without fear, where knowledge is free, where society is not broken up into fragments on the basis of caste, community, gender, where people strive for perfection and where everyone can hold their heads high. Clearly, Umar is a member of Tagore's imagined India. She continues... I think Kanaya and Umar are what the rest of our youth should strive to be like. Kanaya comes from a tiny village. He's faced economic crises all through his school and college days. Yet he is brilliant enough to get admitted to JNU, which turns away thousands of aspirants from across the country every year. Umar hails from a conservative Muslim family. He turned down a scholarship from an American university so that he could study the plight of Aravasis in his own country. He knows there's a threat to his life, yet he has the guts enough to return to campus and declare that he shall not live in fear and that he shall not be silenced. The BJP has resorted to hiding behind the national flag. But what's tragic is that this poor flag is being used to cover up lawlessness and communal activities. For instance, recently men in black coats defied the Supreme Court and physically assaulted people in the court premises. And when they were condemned, they held the tricolor and took out a protest march. The RSS, which had refused to hoist the national flag at its headquarters in Nagpur for more than 50 years, has said all mosques should fly the national flag to prove the patriotism of the Muslim community. Though no temple in Hubli displays the national flag, the BJP conducted a national campaign a couple decades ago to forcibly hoist it at the Idga Maidan. For people like Kanaya and Umar, patriotism does not lie in waving the national flag. Instead, patriotism is having concern for the marginalized, oppressed, and the downtrodden, and working for their betterment. It's not shouting Bharat Mara Kije while threatening to rape the mothers and sisters of dissenters, but having respect for women. It is not forcing Hindu, uh, Hindutva on everyone, but protecting the religious, linguistic, cultural, traditional, and other diversities. It's not towing the RSS agenda, but expressing the ideas of Gandhi, Ambedkar, Jyotiba Pali, Parivat, and others. In my view, Kanaya and Umar are the real patriots who really care for the people of this country. After all, what is patriotism if you don't care for the people that the flag represents? Let me round off with another of Tagore's poems. Patriotism cannot be our final spiritual shelter. My refuge is humanity. I will not buy glass for the price of diamonds, and I will never allow patriotism to triumph over humanity as long as I live. <laughs> Gaudi Lankesh, rest in power. Thank you, Amy Goodman. How's yeah, everyone Amy doing? Goodman. Good work. <laughs> so, Seth, I still yeah. feel like something's happening. Something's happening. I don't know what it is. I'm feeling that soft jazz, that <laughs> CD 101. <laughs> so, you know you're big time when your name is, you're known as either by one name or initials. So our next performer has both. Please welcome Zishan B. Oh. <laughs>
हाथ में हाथ हम रहे साथ साथ ओ हाथ में हाथ हम रहे साथ साथ ए तो तो अहबाब मेरे अब चले तो कहा चले दूर है मंजिल बेनिशान रास्ते मगर जहाँ भी चले मेरे हम साए हम रहे हाथ में हाथ हम रहे साथ साथ सुनो मेरी बात कदम उठाना पड़ेगा इंसाफ की डगर पे है आसी संभा Oh yeah, we keep clapping now. 
One more. They want one more. Thank, thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, it's really an honor to be here and to represent the old country, the motherland. Um, since you asked, we'll do one more. This one, I'm really excited. This is an unreleased song, and um, I'm working working on recording it and interestingly enough there's another paisan another Indian American who really really cares about democracy and justice who's collaborating with me on this his name is Preet Bharara and he's exact producing this album and we can't wait to put this out for you guys in the fall this is about life here mm, irrelevant me I'm so evidently hard to understand, hard to be a decent man. In the so-called promised land, there's no one to hold your hand.
Aaron Kotler on the keys is here from thing. Thank you. Hi guys. How's everybody doing? We doing good? Uh, so I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, I thought this was the never have I ever a season for a watch party. Not the never have I ever bar at the John at the party. Uh, I totally would not have worn orange. <laughs> It's kind of fucked up that Modi fucked up the color orange. Um, it's kind of like how, uh, yeah, yeah, get clap it up for that. <laughs> fucked up orange. Uh, it's kind of how like uh, Trump fucked up red hats. <laughs> but like Trump, you know, the, way, the best way I explain Modi to people is like Trump is Trump and uh, Modi is the Bollywood remake. <laughs> and like most remakes, it's shittier than the original. Um, as uh, people know, uh, today was International Yoga Day. Yeah? Got people do practicing yoga here? It's a great day. It was a great day that he started. And uh, I saw it this morning, and uh, Mayor Eric Adams was there to represent New York. Boo. <laughs> Dude showed up in a suit. That was his way of saying, yeah, I'm not doing yoga today, Modi. <laughs> <laughs> and Modi was there. He was talking up there about yoga. And he was like, you know, it started in India. This is you know, an Indian thing. And, you know, this is the way. Like, he's like a Mandalorian fan. So this is the way. And he finished it. And then after that, a white woman named Anna taught everybody yoga. <laughs> so it started in India, but it ended in Brooklyn. <laughs> and because he was there, they made like, like new poses for him. Uh, they had like uh, Dictator One. <laughs> and then Downward Facing Corruption. <laughs> and then Surya No Muslims. <laughs> That's his favorite position, not mine, all right? <laughs> and if you think that was bad, you should read about Modi. He does way things worse. Um, yeah, I did a lot of research on him and, uh, in preparation for this. And that was his first day uh, for Modi's schedule. Uh, tomorrow, he's going to be at Starbucks. If you want to catch him, he's going to make a signature drink, the Chai Vala Te. Uh, he's very proud of being a Chai Vala. Um, Modi has affected me as an Indian American. Um, I, did, I made a lot of TikToks supporting the farmers' protest. Yeah? And uh, it's a privilege that we can all be here and do this tonight, isn't it? Like, we can all share our stories openly, freedom of speech. Give it up for everybody that, you know, came here and shared their story. It's beautiful. And uh, I had a lot of backlash uh, when I made those farmer's videos. And uh, some of them would be like, yo, bro, like, if you were in India, we'd kill you. And I was like, bro, are you on VPN right now? <laughs> like, how are you getting access to TikTok? I thought they banned TikTok. Bro, like, tunneled through Denmark to give me a hate comment. And he's going to be banning more things. I, like, like, he's gonna see, I think he's going to ban uh, chat GPT. He's going to be like, no chat GPT, only chat BJP. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are all the Indians at? I'm Indian. Uh, yeah, I'm South Indian. Any South Indians here? Oh, whoa, up in front, all right. Uh, this is a you know, teachable moment, like there's North Indians, South Indians, but it's beautiful, we, we're all here together, you know, Hindus, Muslims, it's beautiful. Uh, but here's some education, like North Indian, you know, like uh, there's Bollywood, they speak Hindi, and South Indians, we speak JavaScript, guys. <laughs> really close, really close. Where's my thumb? Are you thumb? Vijay, you're thumb, all right? Yeah, that was uh, C++, actually. That was uh, a, a dialect uh, there. Where? Oh, there you are. Hey, you're North Indian, you said? South Indian. Okay, Tamil? Cool. 
நல்லது நல்லது சாப்பிட்டீங்களா அகேன் ஹாப்பி யூ ஈடன் சாப்பிட்டீங்களா எஸ் தேங்க் யூ மேன் um doing good doing good so i'd say uh, i saw a video and the way modi fights on these tv interviews he always says india is the mother of democracy have you guys heard this on a tv he goes up there and he says india is the mother of democracy i'm like yeah but modi he's the motherfucker <laughs> All right guys, you guys are doing great. Thank you so much. Vic everybody. Hold on Vic. Yeah. Just stay up here for a second. How great was he? If you guys check out Vic on the um Instagram, you can find him under hot vic Krishna. Krishna. Krishna yeah. <laughs> Thanks man. You're I wouldn't want to say it wrong. Uh have you always been I always want to make sure everyone thinks you're hot? I do. I do. And I'm really hot up here right now. So that's why really it's really a temperature thing more than a you know and and you know right. we're going to be very indian right now and ask you are you single y- yeah <laughs> we're just we're just trying to do our part very we... single and if you didn't know he's hot just ask him <laughs> don't put me on the spot he was the first one to tell you <laughs> <laughs> well thanks man uh that was good i'm out now yeah you're out <laughs> yeah. you're out as hot you identify as hot uh, yeah yeah what how you, does it you, does it does it work for you Dude, not, nothing's really working right now, actually, to be no. honest. <laughs> Lose the sweatshirt. Yeah? Take, take it off? Take off the sweatshirt. Let's oh, see what he's, no, what's no, he's working no, with. No, no, no. Don't Let's see what he's working with. <laughs> oh. I'm just doing what the audience wants. <laughs> Meet me at the after party. That's where he's going to be coming off. Yeah. Yeah. He's hitting on this guy. I love yeah. it. He's all about it. <laughs> all right, Vic. Yeah. Thank you, Vic. That was oh, great. Thank you very much. Krishna, Appreciate everybody. <laughs> He is a little overdressed. I totally agree. We would also like to just take a moment to really really thank you all for coming. There are so many groups and communities in India that do not have the privilege of being able to speaking out the way we are tonight and you guys being here are supporting that and making sure those voices and stories are being heard. So thank you for that. Yeah. And on that note, I would like to bring up David Kalal from Hindus for Human Rights. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um I'm thrilled to get to follow the uh, musician and the stand-up comedian. Uh This will be a slightly more prosaic and mundane moment for me to talk about Hindus for Human Rights and maybe you can absorb the artistry as I've been doing backstage. Um Uh I'm David Kalal. It's actually David Dashrath Kalal. I'm uh, affectionately known as the Amar Akbar Anthony of my organization. So perhaps very apropos for the evening. Um I'm ah and I know the Indian most Indian part of the evening is over, but I might be winning cuz I brought slides from a PowerPoint. <laughs> Thank you. Um so I was trying to think about it's it's all in the name right hindus for human rights we're one of the organizations that this evening is supporting um and uh even as comms director i sometimes struggle to explain uh i tried to do a kind of comedy thing but then i'm following a stand up comedian saying it's not you know we're not your mom and dad's hinduism but actually i realize that's wrong what we actually are is we're very much our parents hinduism and our grandparents and our great grandparents and we're very much attached to um those earlier ideas of independence and community and diversity and uh multi-faith ideas of uh what the indian state can be it's uh, so we are we are all those generations that came before us i'll i'm going to do a little bit of uh if you can go to the next slide because uh this language is not as poetic in some ways as the 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 music and the poetry and everything we've heard but i think it's really important we really are organizing ourselves as fundamentally opposing caste advocating for a feminist 
queer inclusive, climate conscious practice. And I think we all know the big things that are happening in India uh, that stand against each and every one of those kind of, uh, you know, I, lists that come up on a slide like this. Um, we really also believe that as a progressive faith movement, particularly in US politics, we have a really big role to play. We're a unique voice. We get invited to places. We can have an impact that is outsized because as a progressive voice, uh, we're invited into a lot of places. And um, I'm going to say I put some stuff on my phone, but it's hard to read my phone because uh, we're, I'm getting so many notifications. The media strategy for everything that's happened around this and this whole weekend has really changed the narrative about what's going on. And so, like, I'm trying to look here, but I keep, I got Signal coming up, I got WhatsApp coming up, they're all blocking me on the way. Anyway, this is part of who we are. If we go to the next slide, our vision. This one, I think, is also really interesting because part of the way we're working is with progressive religious figures in India and in the diaspora who are coming up with and often having to speak bravely in ways against uh, the forces of Hindu nationalism that are flattening and erasing histories of uh, syncretic traditions, uh, multi-faith cooperation, all the rest of it. And I think that uh, that work, as it grows and it's burgeoning at the moment, uh, is, is an important and a key way for uh, the way that Hinduism has been taken over by the contemporary Modi narrative and taken uh, into a space that makes so many people uncomfortable with it. I'll say one more. Oh, here we go. And our vision. Well, our vision is this, right? Uh, or sorry, no. Go into goals. Sorry, I'm not on visions, I'm on goals. There we go. There we go. Our, but our goal is this, right? We're a diaspora organization. If we win the culture here, we win the politics worldwide. This is, the, this is our strength. We have a capacity to embrace this inclusive, pluralistic vision, to make sure that it's a thing that's understood in DC and in Delhi. The stronger our voice is here, the stronger uh, we're able to support movements that we've been hearing about uh, all evening long. So I'll just say, I've got too many slides because I got, go on to the next one. This is how uh, sort of slightly out of touch I was with preparing for this. What I will just say about this, which is amazing for this weekend, the political advocacy and education that's going on this week, the stuff that's happening in DC, the letter, the congressional letter with over, like, what is it, 58, almost 60 senators and congresspeople uh, signing on, insisting that Biden confront Modi and talk to him. I wish it was public, but it's, that's, that's happened. That's been led by groups throughout this entire room. The same thing has happened on the letter that's gone from more than 200 individuals, and I can't remember the count, huge number of organizations that have all, that is on President Biden's desk, even as we speak. We have changed the conversation through everything that everyone has been involved in and working on over the last few months building up to this, but I gotta tell you that the energy that's come up the last week has been incredible and is transformative, and I do think we are winning. And I'm just gonna say, um, yeah, this is us. I'm really proud to be here tonight, standing up here for Hindus for Human Rights, but I'm also proud to be just in this room with everybody who is here. I'll say whether you're motivated by faith, a commitment to justice, to social justice, uh, we're, a formidable and diverse force, and if we keep raising our voices together, they can't stop us. We will raise them in conversation, we will raise them in protest, and we'll raise them in eventual victory, because the arc of history is bending with us. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Swara Bhaskar. I am currently in New Delhi and I am very sorry that I could not be there in person to support this incredible and really important effort, Howdy Democracy. I'm an actor in the Hindi language film industry that is uh, widely known uh, as Bollywood. And I've paid the price for assuming that because I am the citizen of a democratic country, I may speak freely 
about social issues that concern me. It all started on that very fateful day in May 2014 when Narendra Modi first became the Prime Minister of India. I posted two tweets. Well, you could say that it's probably not the best day to uh, spit uncomfortable historical facts. That day started a sort of barrage of a online hate and abuse against me which has ever since ranged from trolling and negative commentary to rape and death threats and from cyber sexual harassment to outright fake news and has not ebbed for even one single day in these past nine years earning me the uh, notoriety and the infamous title of being Bollywood's most hated celebrity on Twitter and online in general. I guess I did not help my case because I continued to speak up and I would just not shut up. You could say that basically I took my role of being an engaged and uh, active citizen of a democracy too seriously. From 2019 onwards, the impact on my work uh, began to reflect. Each time a film of mine or a show released, uh, there was a, the right-wing ecosystem and the IT cells got activated to troll the film or the show, constantly post negative reviews and commentary, often claiming or admitting that they had not even watched the film but because I was in it, uh, deflating ratings on Google and on IMDb, bombarding comment sections with abusive negative content, calling for hashtag boycotts of the film or the series or uh, the brands that I was endorsing. Our industry is hugely perception sensitive and very soon I developed the reputation of being a nuisance, of being trouble and of being too controversial. Cut to 2023, I'm basically persona non grata in Bollywood. You could say that I should have seen it coming and that I asked for it. But what really are you asking for if in a democracy you call a crime a crime? I'm not sharing any of this for your sympathy, though that's most welcome, uh, or to seem like a victim. I made a choice and I'm paying the price for it. But would I have had to pay such a heavy price if more people from my industry spoke up? I'm sharing all this with you today so that voices that are being silenced in India are heard around the world. They want us to be silent because speaking up works. We've seen that with the CNRC protests, we've seen that with the farmers' protests, and we're seeing it now with the wrestlers' protests. Silence is a convenient narrative for those in power, just like the Tina factor. The there is no alternative factor. The fact is that there is an alternative. We are the alternative. Our relentlessness is the alternative. Our fight is the alternative. Our zid or stubbornness is the alternative. Our zid to continue to fight for and uphold the inclusive and progressive constitutional principles of this country that make India a truly great country. That is the alternative. And so I will keep speaking up and I hope so will you. Speaking up for the oppressed, for ourselves, but most importantly, speaking up for India. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashni Dave. Vara Vara Rao is 82 and is a radical poet who writes in the Telugu language. He has championed the cause of India's marginalized, downtrodden, indigenous communities known as Adivasis. He is firmly of the left and successive governments have attempted to silence him. He is among the 16 poets, writers, and activists who have been kept in jail for years without formal charges being filed. 
He is out on medical parole with severe restrictions about what he can do. Poetry. Truth that need not be concealed. People who do not need government. Life that doesn't need ambrosia. If you search my pockets, ransack the books and papers on my table and the racks on the shelves, pry open my flower-like rib cage, there is no secret other than poetry. My dangerous personality that you do not understand, the secret is poetry. Look carefully. It is like moonlight trapped in a rectangle in an arrogant pose. You look up to insult me. See, my poetry shines in the blue sky as a full moon. You see the moon and are shocked. But surprisingly, the moon cannot see himself in this cell. I used to feel disgusted when you were combing my body. Now, after I poured out all my blood and transfused it with poetry to be my company in solitude, I pity you, thinking your search in my lap is for your lost child of humanity. When you grope around my neck, your metal detector trembles on my chest. I surrender to you as if I'm exploring my own secret worlds, uncovering me and peeling my own skin to hear my own poetic voice and to feel the appeal of touch. In your hands that shackle me, poetry descends like a heavy weight as you attach a chain. Whenever I move, noise of soaring free birds. In the daylight of court, prosecutions, conspiracies come out. You go on shadowing, poetry gets ignited and continues to fire. You go on ruling. Poetry talks about people even in sleep. You throw the net of death and keep waiting. Poetry swims in the consciousness just before your eyes. Poetry is an open secret that annuls the state. Even as it is taking shape in my heart, it reaches those it must. It is under... It is understood by the deserved unconsciously. Even as it is rising in my imagination, it inspires movements. The secret is that my poetry took birth with the movement's first milk. My poetry continues to flow like a blood letter stream out of your hands that closed mine like a broken string of pain and thread of anger like the sight that lights tears. How great was that? Now we're going to have a one song from the great Sonny James. If you want to get up and dance, if you want to like get on your feet and rock out, feel free. Please give it up for Sonny Jane, everybody. How y'all feeling? We're gonna play a Sufi rhythm called Tamal, which means ecstasy. So I need everyone to please rise to your feet.
guy here, come up on stage with us. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come up with us, come up with us. Come on, y'all. to get up and dance a little. Everyone feel good? We're gonna keep the laughs coming with our next act, Kniz Circa, a very funny lady. Please welcome her to the stage. Much. Guys, give it up for Sonny and his band. Yes. Ah, oh, such a great time. Are you guys having a good night tonight? Yeah, are we, are we enjoying ourselves in the name of freeing India? Yes. My name is Kaniz. I'm actually originally from South Africa. Yeah, I was, thank you. I was born and brought up there, but I did live as an Indian during apartheid. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so after 21 years, I was like, ah. I'm not sure these are my people. I'm not sure if I belong in this country. So I decided to move to India because I was like, surely my people are there. Yeah. I was there for 17 years. And then after, after 17 years, I was like, eh, I'm not sure these are my people either. <laughs> like I feel a little too Muslim for this country. <laughs> so I went back to South Africa just to check one last time. Still not my people. So I was like, screw it. I'm moving to a city that doesn't give a fuck where you're from. So I moved to New York City, baby, yeah. Thank you. Also to a city that doesn't give a fuck in general. I found my people, yeah. Like, so where are you from, for instance? Yeah, no, I don't give a fuck. That's how we do it in New York, right? That's how we do it. That's how we do it in New York. But you know, that's how, forget about it. I'm walking over here. I'll stop doing the accent. I feel, like, I feel like I'm just losing you guys here on the accent. I, uh, you know, when I moved to, to America, I was worried about like, I like I'd heard horror stories about how brown Muslim people were treated at airports. Yeah, I was like, I don't know why. Did something happen with <laughs> Muslim people in airports? Like I don't like, cause I remember my friend telling me not to, to never forget something, but I forgot. 
Um, does something happen? I feel like someone's hijacked the thoughts from my brain. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. My memory is really crumbling. <laughs> it's really, anyway, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Don't worry about it. Um, but here's the thing, guys. I had a wonderful experience at the airport. I don't know what everyone's talking about. I had a wonderful experience. Like I was at the airport the other day. I was standing in this long security line and um, I see this white man from afar in a uniform, you know, tall guy. He had this air of undeserving authority. He walks up to me and he's like, ma'am, could you please step aside? And I was like, yes. And he's like, we are interested in you. And I was like, oh my God, what? My hair is terrible today. Oh. <laughs> having a bad hair day. He's like, you are a person of interest. <laughs> and I was like, this is, thank you. Thank you so much. And at that point, he grabbed my bag. He took my ticket, my passport. I didn't even ask. Um, and he whisked me to the front of the line. I got to bypass the whole line. The whole time he was shouting, person of interest coming through, move over. Person of interest coming through. And I was like, oh, this is so embarrassing. I hate all this attention. <laughs> Um, well, we get to the front of the line, we go through security, and then we come out and he gives me my own room, guys. He gave me my own room. I didn't have to wait at the gates like the other plebs. <laughs> All right, I got my own room. I sat inside. A lady came inside after five minutes. She gave me a really nice massage. You know, it was very thoughtful, very relaxing. I was very, that's very sweet. And then he comes in again and he starts asking me all these questions about myself. Where are you from? Where are you going? What are you doing? And then I tried to ask him and he, he was like, no, no, no. We just wanted to know about you. <laughs> and I was like, this is, the this is the best first date I've ever been on. <laughs> he, just, he was listening so intently, you know. And then I was like, listen, I've got to go. My flight's about to take off. And he, he insisted. He was like, no, you stay. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but I did miss my flight. I did miss my flight. But you know what? It was worth it. It was worth it because you Americans made me feel so special that day. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> when people say Americans are racist, I will be the one who says no. No, they are not. <laughs> because Americans don't see you as a person of color. They see you as a person of the da 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 Nothing new. 
Thank you so much. Please welcome Zoran Mamdani to the stage. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Zoran Mamdani. It's lovely to be here. I'm dressed like this because I came from the city of dreams, Albany. Um, I am an assembly member for parts of Long Island City and Astoria, and I have the privilege and the honor of being the first Indian American to ever serve in the state assembly. Um, so today I'm going to be reading a letter from Omar Khalid, who is a scholar and a former student activist at the Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi who organized a campaign against lynchings and hate. He has been in jail for more than 1,000 days under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act and has yet to face trial, though his bail application has been repeatedly denied. He has also faced an assassination attempt. So this is Umar's writings. On a cold February morning earlier this year, I was taken out from jail in a police van for my first peshi in court since my arrest in September last year. Inside the van, the cops were having an animated conversation about the farmers' protests. But after four months of captivity, the sight outside was more alluring for me. I could see people going to their offices and children to their schools. There were people in cars, buses, and on roads. Some were immersed in their phones while others were talking to each other. There was no one watching over them. They were free to go wherever, talk to whomever. It was a fascinating sight, the sight of free people. I was reminded of the past when I too, like the people I was staring at, had been free. When I entered Tihar jail back in September 2020, the first thing that struck me was an eerie stillness. Anybody who has ever been inside the complex will tell you about this eerie stillness. It seemed as if we had entered a ghost town, surrounded by high walls on all sides. As the police car that was shifting me from police station to jail kept moving inside, the sounds of the outside world slowly started to recede and were overtaken by silence. In my long hours of silence and an otherwise apocalyptic solitude, I keep telling myself not to turn bitter about my circumstances. It is quite easy to succumb to bitterness, but bitterness would not leave me good for anything productive. Certainly not for the fight we have set out to fight, of reclaiming our country from the forces of hate and divisions. I also keep telling myself to look at the larger perspective. A friend recently told me the story of a human rights lawyer in Chile who all through the years of Pinochet kept fighting cases against him in court. He lost every one of the cases. But after Pinochet fell, his petitions were used to indict Pinochet for his brutality and crimes against humanity. 
And now, many years later, Chile has elected a left-wing president. So I tell myself, no tyrant lasts forever. He cannot trump the truth, and hate can never triumph over love forever. These are the words of Omar Khalid. And they resonate with me deeply, specifically the point about bitterness. It is so easy, even for those of us who are not in a jail cell, to feel bitter, to become bitter. And I think in this city especially, to be a South Asian for a long time has been, has meant to be locked out of the political ecosystem of this city. And we've seen that most clearly in industries that South Asians have disproportionately dominated. What comes to mind for me is taxi driving. For decades we have known of the crisis that was the taxi industry. It was such a crisis that nine drivers took their own lives. And it was easy to feel bitter, to feel bitter about an industry that was 40% South Asian and the way in which politicians had left it had left so many of our immigrant uncles and aunties to suffer under the burden of debt. But politics is not just something that we should believe. It is not just feelings that we have. It is something that we practice. And I am so proud that together, so many of us organized with the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. We went on 45 days of rallies and press conferences. We got arrested outside of City Hall, went on a 15-day hunger strike. And together, we won more than $300 million in debt relief from New York City. And I share that story to say what is possible when we leave bitterness behind and we understand that our mission is to organize. It is something that Beravi Desai taught me from the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. And it's something that I hold dear every day. So thank you all so much. It is a pleasure to be here with you. And I cannot wait to organize with you so that Modi is in our rearview mirror. Thank you. All right, I think someone's running for mayor. Um, and next up, we have an incredible uh, a musician, the one and only VJ Iyer is here, everybody. The one and only. Thanks, everybody. Promise I'll keep this brief. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Um, I'm going to, they asked me to compress, compress. So I'm going to play three short themes. Uh, but they're going to be stitched together as one. Think of it as like three stanzas of one poem. The first is from my father, who passed away a couple of years ago, but he grew up in a pre-partition South Asia, and his vision of who we are uh, is something I hold on to. Um, the second section is what I call plinth, or pedestal, for Ambedkar. And the thir third section is an old composition of mine called Remembrance, which uh, I'd like to dedicate tonight to all of those who have been lost to communal and totalitarian violence in the current <laughs> India.
Hi, my name is Ankur Tiwari. Welcome to Howdy Democracy. I'm tuning in from Bombay. Uh, I feel the best way to beat hate is to sing a love song. So I'll sing John Lennon's Imagine Imagined in Hindi. <laughs> फर्ज करो कोई मुल्क ना हो ना हो कोई मजहब फर्ज करो दुनिया में कहीं भी ना हो कोई सरहद फर्ज करो इंसान को फर्ज करो कि पैसा ना हो ना काला ना सफेद करो जात पात ना हो ना रंग रंग कभे फर्ज करो दुनिया हो सभी की पानी जंगल और पर्वत सब एक देखे हैं खाब कुछ मैंने और मैं अकेला नहीं तुम भी आओगे यहाँ पे मिल के जिएंगे हम सभी Thank you. All right. I recognize that song. That was like the Go Go's. Well, that was the end of the first half of the show. We'll have a short break, then we'll start Act Two. <laughs> it is that time of night where we say thank you and good night. Where is our friend though from the earlier? Who won the most Indian woman in the in the room? Is she still here? We have your wine. <coughs> Do you want it or no? Come, come, claim your prize. Yeah, we can. You can show off that jacket again. Do a little runway show. Here, I'll hand it to you over here. You can. You can. Over here. No, you, you can, can just, just come over here. There you go. There You're you welcome. go. Bottle Thank of wine. <laughs> Save that for a very special occasion. Seth, we must bring up the woman, the mastermind, who, of which this night would never have happened ah, without. Of course. Shruti Ganguly. Yeah. Come on. Shruti. Shruti, come on. Come on. Come on. Don't fake like you don't want to do it. <laughs> come here. so awkward and this event totally ran on Indian Standard Time also so this event is the most Indian of events um, thank you all so much for being here obviously it took a village also appropriately Indian for this event for this to happen and I just want to acknowledge excuse me wow I did not plan this or that gurgle all the people who were involved in making this happen so of course there's Sarah and Nupur from Friends of Democracy Paulina Buchak, who's in the back over there filming. 
Um, thank you, Paulina, to Hannah, Shlomo, all the people from City Winery, to, to Salil for getting those incredible readings from the various political prisoners and from Gori's family. I do have to say, and I'm pu totally putting her on the spot, but Paulina did the graphics and the videos for this evening. And I will, you know, and so, and Paulina is from the Ukraine. And I will say that it's really important for everyone here, all the work that she's just done for us, we have to do for Ukrainians yep. right now, the height of war. And since we don't have a prime minister who in India who is doing enough work to counter authoritarianism in Russia and in Ukraine, we have to do that work too for our Ukrainian friends. So thank you. There's lots of people to thank. I'm sure first, you know, the Indian American Muslim Council, the Polish Project, Hindus for Human Rights, thank you for your work. We're so happy to support you and the incredible stuff you've done. And I mean, and I mean, this is just like a strange reflection, but fear did not win today. Fear did not win today. And in fact, love won today and love for each other, love for our communities, love for our, you know, communities of other people. And that's the important thing to remember is that fear did not win and love did. And everyone who showed up here on this stage, everyone who's on that video, to the people who can't travel, to people who are behind bars, to the people like Gori Lankesh whose lives have been lost, to the Father Stan Swamis, to the Bilkis Banos, to the Asafa Banos, to the millions of people whose names we don't know. This is why we are here. This is why we have to keep being here. And I'm just so grateful to er all of you for showing up. And that is incredible because that means that we will do this again next year. Thank you. All right. Oh, give it up for our DJ. Yes. Rajuju. Raju. So he's going to be DJing for a little bit. You can get up and dance. You can hang out. But thank you so much for being here. That's the end thank of the show. Thank you all. We nailed it. We did it. Hand. We beat authoritarianism tonight. We solved it. I'm gonna get